place to stand so you can swing your legs around a little bit. You got me? Do you want your head in it? No. Okay. It's I just need my feet. You're a headless woman. Okay. I can do that. All right. So what you need to do for this one is to imagine that sagittal plane between your feet and imagine you're standing on that grid for the frontal plane. So when we get the planes going, your feet are in the middle here, and then you've got two quadrants and two quadrants. Make sense? So I've got a quadrant here and a quadrant back here, and one up here and one up here. Now, when we did the upper extremities, did you see the X? Mm -hmm. And then you see the X, mm -hmm. okay? We're going to make an X with the lower extremities, but the X is on the floor. So the X is in the horizontal plane on the floor, okay? Now, for uh, our first pattern, we're going to start out with the toes in plantar flexion behind, which means, and then we're going to have to fold up the, up the lower extremity and then end up, so if we're ending up, or starting out in plantar flexion here, we're going to end up where out here? Dorsal flexion. There you go. So we're here, we come up and over, and end up in dorsal flexion. So we've crossed midline, and we cross from posterior to anterior. Are we also doing like medial and external rotation? Like you get that, yeah, to... by doing, uh, being on your toe here, mm -hmm. your hip is in internal rotation. Yeah. Then when we come up and we camp the heel back and go into dorsiflexion, you're in external rotation at the hip. Mm -hmm. It just naturally comes along. So come up and down. So we've worked the hip, the knee, and the ankle. And up and back to dorsiflexion. And up and down. Up and down. Cool? Make sure you've crossed midline. And it doesn't have to be real high in the front. It's going to have some limitations to it, but it is in dorsiflexion. So I've always called this one the like a soccer kick here, coming across. All right? Starts on a pointed toe and then kick across your body. Now, just to stay balanced, do it with the same thing with the other leg. Okay, out and away, up, and dorsiflexion. And up and down. Now, this is, as you can feel it, this is really good exercise for your hips. Yes. Just right here. You're working it in multiple planes. You're working these deep muscles in your hip. Up and dorsiflexion. Cool? All right, so that's, I think, D1. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to get crazy about D1s and D2s. With the upper extremity, it's more sensitive, but we've got apples and swords to go with that. So, if we started out over here with the first, we're going to have to start out crossed and plantar flexed for the second pattern. So, cross behind, then we come up and end up in abduction here, dorsiflexion. So, we went from here to here or we went from here to here. So plantar flexion, up, and dorsiflexion. Are we internal rotation on our hip? Uh-huh. We're getting both rotations. Here I am externally rotated in my hip, then I come up, and I'm massively internally rotated as much as humanly possible, which isn't really a big action. And then we come back down. And that's the two patterns. Cool. And of course, since we've got to stand on something, we don't do bilaterals with large <laughs> yeah. All right? Okay. Can I get somebody I can work on here? You can work on me. Okay. I'll always be a volunteer. All right. I like it. I'm just going to keep this going. Yeah. And we'll go ahead and you can pop that pillow out. Oh, you just cover her up. Now, 
you have to have some little bit of challenge with your pay attention to your draping on this and I'm just going to bring this in between here give her a little bit of a sort of a makeshift diaper there. Keep her appropriately draped. Cool? All right, legs down. I'm going to start and whenever you're doing this, if you need to step away and do the pattern yourself, feel free. Okay? So if I'm starting behind and pointed, I'm here and up and across. And up and down and you can drive this through the heel I can push here get it going all I have to do is guide here and dorsiflexion and up and avoid putting your thumb in this area that's really sensitive plantar flexion ah, unlock it up and dorsiflexion crossing midline Crossing from behind to in front. Would you slide them closer to the end of the table so that you I can could. get more of a... I, I might, and I could get a little bit more off the edge of the table. If you have a very large person, don't do that because you'll end up, if you bring them into abduction, you'll flip them off the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool? All right, so the next pattern has to go behind. So, gee, that was here and up and out. So I need to go as close to midline as possible, and that's as far as I can get. So you can leave that leg there. And I'm going to tuck it in, come up, and out. So you see I just made my X, my second half of my X. Here, out, here, and down. And up, and out. Up, and down. And I'm putting more of my pressure through her heel and that's how I'm getting my flexion. And I just take a little short step. Carla, are you internally rotating as you attempt to go behind? I don't have to worry about rotating it because as I'm doing this, it's rotating. There's my internal rotation. So I've kind of driven that with the whole leg. I come up, and by the fact of taking this here, mm -hmm. I'm going to get external rotation. So the rotations with both upper and lower, if you get the hand in the right place, it drove your rotation mm -hmm. on both the feet. If I turn the foot in, by turning the foot in, I'm getting internal rotation at the hip. So the distal action is driving the proximal action. Cool? <clears throat> the, the distal here has really given me my rotation of the humerus. <coughs> Cool? Questions? One thing I want to point out with upper extremity is that you, we started with cardinals, so we know that this works or we won't have them do this. Because as we're coming in here, that scapula came out and up. Okay, so the scapula is getting all of its movement as well as you're bringing the extremity along. If you started out with cardinal plane range of motion and the scapula didn't move, we didn't go any further. Because this would be, the diagonals would be contraindicated because you can't reach down and behind without having rotation, downward rotation and adduction. And we know that reaching up here is upward rotation and abduction. So everything is getting worked. The pelvis, <coughs> excuse me, the pelvis isn't moving, but the femur is moving like crazy. <coughs> cool? Go to it. Thank you.